Hello everyone, I'm Nazmul Hassan and today I'm going to demonstrate how to design a frequency selective surface or FSS in CST. Now one thing that comes to our mind is that why there is a word selective and what does it even select? The first answer that pops up into our mind is a filter because a filter is an electrical component that can either allow certain frequency to pass or block certain frequency, right? So in that sense, FSS is basically an electromagnetic filter. And how does it even work? Let's see. Imagine we have a frequency selective surface here and uh, there is an incident wave denoted by AI. Now, depending upon the property of this specific FSS, it can allow this frequency to pass through it. So in this case, AT is the transmitted wave and this is known as transmissive frequency selective surface. This is exactly the same as a passband filter. All right. Now next, we have another frequency selective surface and this time the frequency uh, or the incident waves frequency is different from the first one and this is denoted by AI let's say that this this specific surface was designed to block this certain frequency AI all right so in this case what it does it would reflect it back it would not allow to pass through it so this is called a reflective frequency selective surface and AR is the reflected wave so this is kind of stop band filter all right it is blocking certain frequency um, now let's see the geometric structure of FSS. It consists of many many unit cells as you can see and uh, this particular FSS that I'm going to design it has a ring, metal ring and this specific ring is mounted on top of a substrate and the substrate is Arlon AD300D with a permittivity of 2.94 and a tangent loss of 0.0021 and you can see the dimensions in millimeters so this is uh, the design specs and uh, we're going to jump to CST right now to design the unit cell first and then from the unit cell we'll design the entire um, FSS array and simulate it and see the results now let's go to CST open the CST and then new template antennas planner frequency domain and then next um, we are designing uh, the FSS at 60 gigahertz um, but uh, I want to see a wide frequency range response of this particular FSS so um, I will simulate this surface or the unit cell first because we are designing the unit cell right now from 22 uh, let's say 80 gigahertz and we are interested for only 60 gigahertz point because this is our point of interest and then finish so let's construct the substrate first So A is basically the dimension of the substrate and then the thickness of the substrate is let's say um, H and you can select the substrate from here Arlon AD this one lossy okay now the value of a is 2 millimeter and the thickness is 0 0.1 millimeter okay now let's draw the ring so select this cylinder ring and the outer radius is let's parameterize this O rad 
pi rad this is the inner radius of the ring and this should be 0 0 z max the thickness the metal thickness mt and let's select copper annealed from the library the outer radius was 0.9 millimeter and the inner one was 0 0.7 and metal thickness is 0 0.05 okay so this is my unit cell okay let me turn off the working plane let's define the boundary conditions because this is an because this is the init cell so you have to define electric two electric walls and two magnetic walls on the sides basically and then um, the Z mean and the Z max should be open at the space okay and uh, the frequency is basically 60 gigahertz the distance of the boundary from the surface should be a uh, quarter wavelength at the point of interest so point of interest is 60 gigahertz so the distance from the surface to the uh, top plane should be at least quarter wavelength okay um now we have to define the port so basically what we are doing um, we are launching the wave from the top plane or the top uh, surface and then it hits this in itself some of the wave is reflected and some of them is transmitted we are going to capture this transmission and reflection uh, of this particular in itself so we have to define two ports top and bottom go to web guide port and then select Z negative apply this is one port and we have to apply another port in the uh, bottom at the bottom side so this is the second port okay so I designed this unit cell in uh, in the classic waveguide mechanism but you can also design it in um, the ready template of the CSD using that uh, unit cell uh, template it's up to you but the results are same now go to setup solver everything looks good general purpose tetrahedral okay now let's start the simulation Uh, you can ignore this warning now let's check out the S parameters okay as you can see S11 and uh, S12 or uh, the transmission and the reflection coefficient um, so what does it mean let me show the axis marker around 60 gigahertz okay the reflection is almost um, 100% almost all the wave at 60 gigahertz all the wave is basically reflected denoted by the s11 this is the reflection uh, coefficient of this surface right and s21 denotes the transmission how much power or the incident power is transmitted on the other side of the uh, of this in itself as you can see uh, the value is minus 48 so very very um, less power has been transmitted from one side to another side most of the power was reflected uh, as you can see in the reflection coefficient so that means the unit cell that I designed is a reflective unit cell 
Now the most interesting part is that this init cell has no ground plane but uh, the incident wave is reflected back. Now this is very very um, weird because this init cell is behaving like a perfect metal. A perfect metal uh, can reflect the incident wave completely, right? And if you see the S11, the entire wave is reflected, uh, denoted by the uh, S11. So that means even we don't have any ground plane, but uh, because of the property, uh, electromagnetic property of this init cell, it is acting or behaving like a metal like a complete sheet of metal. So whatever incident wave is hitting this surface, it is reflecting back. So this is the power of this artificial uh, material. So this kind of material is basically also known as metamaterial because they are engineered especially uh, in order to serve certain purpose. So um, now we know that this is a reflective in itself so we can design uh, reflective FSS by using this in itself. Now let's design that array of FSS by using this in itself. Now let's design the FSS array by using this in itself. Go to new and then project template, periodic structures, FSS fully structured. This template we are going to use frequency domain. Um, let's uh, say from 50 to 70 E field and our uh, point of interest is 60 gigahertz. Next, next. Now let's design the array. First of all, let's create the substrate. And now let's create the ring. This is the metal thickness and we are going to use copper. So the outer radius was 0.9, inner radius was 0.7, metal thickness was 0.05. Now it's easy, we are going to replicate this in itself along x and y direction to generate the array. First of all, enable this local code in its system and then select these two components, ring and substrate, and then go to transform, translate, and here you should enable this option and we're going to construct 4x4 four four array so the repetition factor should be 4 and uh, along the V um, axis we should translate it by A so this is the dimension of the substrate you can see the preview there are four unit cells along V axis. So press OK. And now you can select all of them together. And then translate again along U direction. And the repetition factor should be four. And copy should be enabled. Now you have an array. Right? It's easy to construct. Now this is the frequency selective surface, 4x4 array, there is no ground plane, 
but uh, let's see what happens. We are going to um, excite this surface by a plane wave. So a plane wave uh, will hit this surface and we will see the response um, either uh, it will transmit the plane wave on the other side or it will block the plane wave and reflect it back. Let's see what happens. Um, so our excitation signal um, should be basically a plane wave here. Uh, you can see this red um, plane is basically a plane wave mimicking a plane wave uh, and the polarization of this wave is along x-axis by this green arrow. You can see this. Um, before running the simulation, we need to set up the far field. Um, so select far field at 60 gigahertz. And then we are ready to run the simulation. Everything is all right. So press start and the simulation will start. Um, I will stop this video right now and come back again when the simulation is complete. Okay, so the simulation is complete. Now we are ready to see the results. Let's go to far field. Um, let's see the three D plot. Show structure. As you can see, this surface is basically reflector. Um, even though there is no ground plane. Uh, it can reflect the incident wave, right? And uh, this is interesting. We can see the polar plot. Uh, this is um, at the constant phi equal to 90 degree cut angle view. And uh, this is also suggesting that the surface is reflecting the incident wave. So this is basically a uh, reflective FSS. Okay. I hope that you learned how to design FSS in CST. So make sure to subscribe to my channel and like this video. And if you have any query, feel free to leave them in the comment section. I'll try to answer as soon as possible. In addition to that, if any of you have any simple ideas for discussion, or if you'd like to discuss about collaborative research purpose and publication, feel free to reach me out at these two emails. I will try to respond at my earliest convenience. So till then, have a good day. Thanks.